When you're ready to start creating your citations on EasyBib, the first thing you need to do is create a new project. In the upper left hand corner you'll see a red button that says plus new project. When you click on that, you name your project and you choose your default style. The English department generally asks for MLA, social studies asks for APA, but always be certain to check with your teacher which format they'd like. I'm going to leave my default style as MLA and click create in the bottom right hand corner. I now have a new project. I can click on bibliography, notebook, paper, edit, or share. For right now, I'm going to click on bibliography. You're now brought to a screen that has several tabs. You can create citations for websites, books, newspapers, journal articles, databases, and 59 other options. Most of the time while you're doing research in high school, you'll rely on websites, books, newspapers, journal articles, and databases. To cite a website, you'll see a search box, and under that, you'll see Manual Cite. I choose Manual Cite because sometimes EasyBib doesn't have the right information. You're then brought to a screen that says Search for your source. Again, we're not going to auto cite, we're going to create our citation manually. Number two says Fill out what you can. It's automatically defaulting my source type to content published on a website. It then asks me for my article title. One of the articles I want to cite is this article from Biography.com. It's about Eleanor Roosevelt. The title of this article would be Eleanor Roosevelt Biography. If I were going to cite this website from Time.com, the article title would be UN Says 43 Peacekeepers Detained by the Armed Groups in Gollum Heights. The next piece of information that it asks you for is the contributors. These are also the authors of an article. Sometimes the author will be listed right below the title or at the end of the document. Sometimes there isn't an author for the article, such as the case of the Eleanor Roosevelt article. However, the Time Magazine article does have an author listed right below the title. The next piece of information that EasyBib asks for is the website title. In this case, it would be Time. In the Eleanor Roosevelt case, it would be Biography.com. It then asks for the publisher or sponsor. This would be the same information for Biography.com or Time, the same as the name of the website. It then asks for the URL of the website. This is the address of the website located in the address bar in the upper left-hand corner. You click, you copy, and then you paste into your citation. It then asks you want to display the URL. This is a preference of the teacher. I usually say yes so my teacher can find my source of information quickly and easily. The next piece of information it asks for is when it was electronically published. Again, I'm going to go back to my article and I'm going to see if anywhere on the page I can find a date that this article was published. Again, if you can't find it at the top and scroll down to the bottom, you can sometimes figure it out. In the case of the Time article, I see that it was published at 10.41 a.m., which indicates to me that it was actually published today. I fill that information in this line, and the next line asks me when the resource was accessed. It's quite easy to just click on today, and it'll auto-fill the date for you. When you filled in all of this information, you click on the red Create Citation button and it'll create a citation for you. Now I didn't fill in the information in my citation as I was showing you how to do it, so my citation looks a little bit weird. But as you add your citations, it builds a bibliography for you, which it automatically organizes alphabetically. The next type of source that we're going to cite is a book. Again, it offers you a search bar, but instead we're going to click on Manual Cite. It's quite easy to find the information you need to cite your book. The first thing it asks you for are the contributors. Again, this is the author. The second piece of information it asks for is the title of the source. If the book happens to have volumes, editions, or series, you would fill that information in there. And then you fill in the publication information, which can be found on the back side of the title page. The other type of resource I'm going to talk about citing is a database article. When you click on database, and then click on Manual Cite, you'll find another form to help you create your database citation. The first thing you need is the article title. If you look at your database article, most of the time the information you're going to need for your citation is right at the top. 
So the title of my article is an update on growth and development of telemedicine with some pharmacological implications. I would fill that information in there. The next thing it asks me for are contributors. A lot of times, articles from databases will have more than one author. In that case, you would copy the information for the first author. If the database article you're working with has more than one author or contributor, you simply click on Add Another Contributor to add lines for as many authors as you need. The next piece of information that it asks you for is the name of the database. This database article happens to be coming from Academic One file, so that's what I would fill in in the database box. The publisher or service provider of this particular article is Gale. The next piece of information it asks you for is when it was electronically published. Again, you can find this by looking at the top of the article. This one was December 2014. Fill in the appropriate information. The date accessed would be today. And then the URL of a database article is really difficult to include, so I tend to leave that out. At the end, you click Create Citation. And once again, you'll have a citation. Again, I did not fill in the information, so my citation looks pretty funny. Once you've created all of your citations and you're ready to create your work cited, come down to Bibliography, select All, and then with Checked, you have a few options. You can copy it into another project, export to a Word document or a Google Doc or a SkyDrive, copy and paste citations, email them, or delete them. I'm going to choose Copy and Paste Citations, and then I copy and paste them into my document.